Okay. Cooperative Legacy Project Interview Number 15, August 17th, 2005. We're visiting with South Dakota Co-op Hall of Fame member Clement Klocek. Yes. Uh, where and when were you born? I was born in 1924, right on the farm south of Scotland. Okay. Uh, been a Scotland resident all my life, only when we traveled. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Where was your family originally from when they moved to South Dakota? Well, uh, the great grandparents came out of uh, Czechoslovakia. Mm -hmm. the, the father did. Mm -hmm. And the mother came from a suburb of Czechoslovakia. Oh, okay. Uh, did you have brothers and sisters? Yes, I had one brother and one sister. Okay, what was your parents' names? Frank Klochik was my dad's name and okay. my mother was Anne. Okay. What What are some of your earliest memories on the farm? Well, what was it like back then? We back, uh, I can remember uh, we started when I, 1924, I was born, so I can remember the 30s quite well. Mm -hmm. Very hard times, there was no, there was no money, we didn't go uptown very little, and we lived through the 30s, and then uh, along come uh, World War II, and then after, in the 40s, the economy started changing, and it got much better. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A lot of hard work and back to the hauling bundles, thrashing grain and we worked, I worked with horses from the beginning of my life. Mm -hmm. And then in 1937 we started with tractor farming. What uh, sort of person was your father? You want to talk about him a little bit? Father? Well, he was, he was, uh, he was quite a pusher. He had a health problem. He had asthma real bad, so he didn't. Uh, he wasn't able to work a lot with us, but uh, we respected him and we took care of him. He never did go to a home or anything. We took care of him in our own homes, and and uh, he was. Uh, I thought he was well respected in the community. He didn't. Uh, he didn't go uptown much and stuff like that in them days. We just didn't do it. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. How about your mother? What's her person? My brother? Your, your mother. The mother, Ann Pitsenberger was her name. She originated from Eastern Iowa. Mm hmm And uh, she was a quiet, little short, hard-working lady. And she passed away early in life with... Uh, Heart problems, that family on the mother's side then mm -hmm. had heart problems. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did you always want it? Was your goal to farm when you were No, there, when you were at the... What did you want At to the do? beginning, uh, I went to high school, and when I got out of high school, I s signed up for college. and. I had engineering on my mind, but my brother got drafted into the service, so then I got back, called back to farm with Dad because Dad's health was no good. Mm -hmm. And so that's where the farming career started, and it stayed with me then. Okay. I did not attend college then. Mm -hmm. Was your uh, was your dad always, uh, did he always have the uh, health problems, or did, yes, did that had, kind of come he, on? Soon? No, he had, he had health problems quite Okay. On. Okay. How, you know, as you look back to life on the farm, you know, you were talking a little bit about the 1930s. Um, how do you see that different from today? Well, today is, uh, is uh, altogether different because of, uh, uh, at that time, they didn't borrow the money they did now and stuff. Now the country is, uh, the people and everything, the farmers, is all run on borrowed money. At the time that 
we did it. There's very little borrowed. You got along with what you got. The overhead wasn't what it is now. The overhead was was uh, way down, and you uh, you got along with your means. Now. It's, it seems like the, I couldn't say the country is spoiled, but they just go to the bank now and borrow some more money mm -hmm. and keep keep operating. Mm -hmm. um, where did you go to school? Did you go to school right Scotland. here in Scotland? Uh, country Scotland, school great. All, I went to a great school out in the country, Beetle mm -hmm. District. There's nothing. There's just a monument there now, mm -hmm. a, uh, country school. And then I went to high school at Scotland, South Dakota. Okay, what was that like? You want to talk about country school down here in well, Bonham County? Country school in Bonham County was, uh, it seemed, uh, it got along great. I was always in favor of uh, country schools. It seemed like the children in a country school followed one another. Mm -hmm. At the time in the 30s when I started, went to, started high school, the country kids was kind of, almost, you can't say backwards, but kind of left behind. The town, kids that lived in town were more advanced with being around than we are, which you don't find to this day because the country kids are just as well with the, with the children that, that are in the towns. Mm -hmm. There's more equal living now at the time, at the 30s and stuff, it seemed like a little more hardships out in the country. Mm -hmm. than there was uh, in the town. Yeah, yeah. How many kids were there in that school when you were attending? Oh, there was, uh, there was 12 mm, okay. at the time, yeah. Okay. And then it varied down. There never, it never was a big school. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did you go there until what, the 8th eighth grade? Eighth, until the 8th grade. And then through high school the eighth grade. here in Scotland? Then, then I went to high school in Scotland, South Dakota. Okay. What was high school in Scotland like in those days? Well, high school in Scotland, we started, when I started school, the um, WBA built a new school. I was the first class to graduate out of the new school in 1942. And then uh, they did have a fire after that, and it burnt down. But started at high school and started, primarily we started, I was on the, FFA program, they originated AG at the time, and then they had the FFA program, mm -hmm. which I followed through pretty well through high school and then after high school. Mm -hmm. And uh, the high school then was, uh, you made more of what you decided you wanted to be. And uh, so, uh, but uh, the school was uh, pretty much the same mm -hmm. as it is, only it was run on a lot more economy at that time because they didn't have all the substitute teachers. The teacher, even the prof professor, he had to teach school if a teacher was absent. And uh, mm -hmm. they got by with a lot more uh, efficiency in the economy than they do at this time day and age. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You mentioned the FFA program. Was this one of the earlier schools to adopt that? Uh, yes, it was. No? Yes, 1937, um, 38, yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, when did you meet your wife? Met the wife in uh, 1950. One okay. through a through a cousin's wedding, mm -hmm. and then we got married in 1953. Mm -hmm. What's her name? Mary Ann. Okay. Mary Ann Burnt okay. was her maiden name. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you've been married since 1953, so that's mm -hmm. what, about uh, 51 50, years, 52, 53. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned the military. You, were, you had a brother that served in the military? I had a brother that was in the military. Uh, I, they signed me up for the military and then I was deferred. And then at the time that I was to go, then uh, my health, I had a little high blood pressure and then I was mm. detained from the military okay. services. Okay. 
they were kind of interested back in those days in maybe maintaining some people out the farm. So you were the yes, I was. You know, I was deferred as a farmer for mm -hmm. for two years. Okay. What what branch did your brother serve in? He was in the uh, heavy artillery and infantry, but it was he was on an M1 tank. Oh, okay. He was in Guadalcanal, Bougainville. He never. Um, Four years that he was in, he never had a furlough. He got over on the islands, and, and for four years he was in the service and never got back to the States. Okay. Is he still living? No, he passed away. Oh, he did. Okay. Um, we, we operated as a partnership. Hmm. Then my brother and I, we, okay. we, we were partners in a farming operation mm -hmm. while, while we had it going on. What, what was the time frame on that? Um, we started when he came home from the service in 1946, and then we broke partnership in uh, 19, uh, 1979 when my health failed me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, you have kids? Yes, I have uh, three daughters. Okay. Where are they all at? Uh, the oldest, Carol Striley, she married the Striley. She lives by Tripp, South Dakota, mm -hmm. and uh, they don't farm. They live out in the country. And then Anne, uh, second daughter, is uh, in Florida. She's a pharmacist. She was in the pharmacy. Mm -hmm. And then Darla, our youngest daughter, lives by Colton, Darla Van Assel. She, uh, she is... Uh, she went to school as a lab tech, but now she's in the computer with uh, with uh, McKinnon Hospital in Sioux Falls. Mm -hmm. Okay. They live by Colton, South Dakota. They live about 25 miles out of Sioux Falls. Oh. They built a new home out in the country. Was your uh, your family uh, involved in Farmers Union at all back in those days when you were young? We were we were not involved in Farmers Union until uh, later on when I started the cooperatives. Okay. And then we, uh, my dad originally was a member of the Farm Bureau, mm -hmm. and then was, so he wasn't with the Farmers Union okay. until until about in the in the sixties. Okay. Then, then I de started developing with the farmers union. All right. Um, were there uh, were were you uh, involved in any cooperatives down here prior to the ones that we're going to talk about? The ones you were involved in founding. But was your family? Do, were there cooperatives around here in the earlier? No, years? there there was not much uh, cooperatives. There was uh, they called it like a farmers union station in Tyndall, mm -hmm. and they had a farm bureau. Station in Tyndall, mm -hmm. Scotland. Scotland had none, mm -hmm. and uh, that's the only ones that that I knew were Tyndall and then Menno over. But we didn't get there much. But Tyndall was was about twelve miles from where we lived, so that was uh, our closest area. Okay. What uh, what was it about co-ops that uh, that caused you to get interested in them? Uh, because before you were involved in founding the ones. That you were well, what got interested in the co-ops was uh, the amount of the amount of uh, money we were spending, and uh, not gaining substantial equity. It seemed like in it, the money was all being spent and nothing saved at home so then in, uh, then I started with the cooperative movement by uh, uh, Tabor Lumber Cooperative in 1958. Okay. Uh, they had a Thompson Lumber Company that they wanted to make into a private so there was a group of us got together and so we decided instead of a, a corporation we made it into a cooperative and that started as a Tabor Lumber Cooperative. That was the first cooperative 
mm-hmm. movement that I started. Okay. Okay. Um. And then, uh, then it developed into Scotland because we were closer to Scotland. Then we, there was a station come up for sale. So then we started with the cooperative movement here to get it started in my living room with 17 people present in 1958, that would have been. Mm-hmm. Uh, then we started the, the uh, Scotland cooperative. Mm-hmm. And uh, we had a terrible time to even raise $5,000 to buy the, the old filling station out. We had to run and try and gain equity, and it grew up to a multi-million dollar business today. Mm-hmm. Did you get any assistance from anywhere in the process of working? Uh, our assistance at that time was was uh, Farmland Industries, mm-hmm. was uh, helped promote it quite a bit. Okay. Okay. Who were some of the people you worked with then? Uh, uh, that you, you remember anybody specifically that uh, uh, was either helpful or not? You mean from uh, from, well, from farmland? From or farmland. Uh, some of the other board members that you worked with. And well, board members. Yeah, uh, Tabor. We started out. We didn't start with no help of nobody there, and then we did tie in with farmers to farmland industries there. And then we tied in with uh, with the GTA mm-hmm. in Tabor, where Scotland stayed mostly with with uh, with uh, farmland industries, but Tabor went to GTA, and that was the original ones. There was um, I have a picture. Was the original board members was Elb- Albert Kreber, uh Albert Fuchs. My Dewey Thompson and uh, Joe Rushka and I were the original start of the board at Tabor, South Dakota. Mm-hmm. And uh, as far as Scotland, Scotland is concerned, that started a year later when we started the Scotland Cooperative, and I got on the foothold of that. And then there was uh, Edgar Bowder and uh, uh, Eugene Bender. Uh, Collins and uh, see who was the other one? Oh. Uh, um, I guess just can't pull his name right out of the hat right now. That uh, I don't care. So they had a picture of it here. No, I don't. No, okay. Okay. And then I, I stayed. I went off the Scotland board, and then I stayed with the. I was chairman of the Tabor Lumber Cooperative, I think, for 17 years. Mm-hmm. And then when we started, <laughs> I was on board of directors all my life. And then when we started the BY Water District, then I uh, I asked off the board of directors from the Tabor Lumber Cooperative, and I stayed. We started the. B.Y. Water District in 1975. Okay. That was the last endeavor. Mm-hmm. Okay. Getting back to the lumber, uh, was it was it difficult getting getting going there? Uh, how- well, it was very difficult. We had no we had no funding. We had very little funding. Mm-hmm. And then uh, Farmland Industries did help on the funding. Mm-hmm. Every time we had a meeting, we we knocked each other for a hundred bucks and. <laughs> and uh, to, to get it going, yeah. because they didn't. They, it was closed. Mm-hmm. The town they closed the Thompson Lumber Company. Mm-hmm. So then from there, we went into the feed business, 
and into the petroleum business because the lumber lumber is not a highly aggressive business. You don't change inventory yeah. very yeah. often. Would that have been Great Plains? Uh, uh, there was kind of a Great Plains branch to No, uh, it was GTA. No, it was not Where a you great... You were working with farmland? Right? We was working okay. with farmland. Did you get the lumber from there too? Did they have a no. lumber? No, we, uh, the lumber mostly was gotten through, uh, through just private. Oh, uh, okay. Through okay. private, mm-hmm. as far as the lumber was concerned. Mm-hmm. All right. uh, but uh, when it got into the feed and fertilizer, we got into the fertilizer business mm-hmm. and uh, feed. First we started with farmland and the feed and the fertilizer stayed with farmland, but then we went to GTA on the feed. Oh, okay. Because okay, it was a feed, it was a feed right. mill at Sioux Falls and, mm-hmm. and it seemed like it just was a little better moving product. Mm-hmm. A board decision at the time. Okay, okay. Uh, you mentioned uh, the the uh, water uh, B B Y B Y Water District that yeah. started. Well, there was a, just a group of uh, about five individuals was going to purchase water out of uh, Springfield, South Dakota, and just start a small hundred some user mm-hmm. district. But once we started working with it. Uh, we worked with FMHA at that time. George Starock was the local Yankton guy, and uh, Sword Out was the state representative from FHA, FMHA, and he had the foresight to see what this would would grow into. And uh, instead of just buying water from Springfield, we uh, we got a loan and grant money of ten and a half million dollars put up our own treatment plant, mm-hmm. which we thought wouldn't go, but then he he had the foresight and, and, and kind of pushed us, helped push us into it. Mm-hmm. And then it relatively grew into a giant instead of just a, a small hundred and some user mm-hmm. originally idea of it. Okay, what's the uh, area served by that now? The area served by that it goes to, uh, it first was Bonham and Yankton County, and then Hutchison County asked in. Mm-hmm. And then we started, then we deal, then Hanson County has taken their complete water from us. Then Turner McCook came in, so he's furnishing Turner McCook with the water. And the last project was uh, getting a pipeline to Mitchell, South Dakota working with a municipality, which was quite a change from a, from a rural situation to go into a, mm-hmm. a town of that size. So it took some, uh, uh, some, a uh, lot of midnight oil burning to get contracts settled because, uh, the funding is, is different for a municipality of that size mm-hmm. than it is for Rural cooperative. Yeah, a lot of extra demand for water, I would guess. Yes, demand for water. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. How long were you on? The, were you on that board? How long? Well, I start. I was originally at 1975, and mm-hmm. I'm still on it. Oh, you're still on it. Okay. Yes. So that's uh, 30 years, right? 30 years. Yes. Yeah. I've been. Um, I've been an officer on it, off and on, on different categories. talking about the what what are the kind of issues you had to deal with over the years with all with those co-ops what was the was there any difficult things other than the process well there was a lot of a lot of spectism the 
the towns were not for the cooperatives, all the cooperative movement, mm -hmm. the other business places. It all carried back from when the hard times was uh, the oil people and then carried these farmers. Then when we started the cooperative movement, then it was more on a cash basis. and There was a lot of, a lot of criticism mm -hmm. in the towns on the cooperative movement. Mm -hmm. And also uh, with the one in Scotland, then when Tindall Elevator started too, that was another cooperative. I backed off from that one. I was a member, but I backed off from helping mm -hmm. because that was I had too much going on. I was on the board in Scotland and and Tabor and and plus plus I was always on a, on a, I was on the FMHA board. And I was on the ASC and uh, yeah. I was just too much go too much all the time. No family. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it was meetings every night of the week instead of having some family time. Yeah, did the various co-ops get along with each other? Uh, not would have been in competition with each other. They, they were more competition with each other. They got along fairly well. There was little competition between the between the suppliers, you might say. Mm -hmm. But uh, as far as the uh, uh, the locals seem to uh, to drive along pretty good. Yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, challenges uh, facing cooperatives have changed over the years. What do you think is the biggest change from when you were getting started back in, say, the early, late fifties, early sixties to today? The kind of issues facing co-ops. You see a big difference? Well, uh, yes, the big difference I can see is uh, is uh, the funding and then the way the regionals worked out. Hello. Yes. Well, Mother couldn't get the phone working. I've got it. Can you call back a little bit? I've got the interview going on here. Oh, okay. Yeah, call back a little later then, Annie. Mary Ann's got a noon meeting. She's going to Civic Club, so. Okay, okay. Bye-bye. Clem, your phone isn't That was Ann. Yeah, but your phone isn't working. Oh. No. Okay. Well, and uh, I have my personal opinion on it as far as uh, same with farmland. I think the farmland, uh, when they had uh, when they had rural people on the executive council with farmland and such, it worked a lot better when they started getting only executives that were managers. It uh, seemed like it got out of control, mm -hmm. as far as I was concerned. Yeah. As far as the regional, that's why um, when I was mingled with Tabor and stuff, that's why we refrained from farmland and went to um, went to GTA and some of it because of the. Uh, just the way the outlook was mm -hmm. was looking. Yeah, yeah. Um, did the local co-op here lose some money when the when farmland went under here? Well, we lost our. Um, the local co-op actually didn't lose. It's the members' yeah. equity mm -hmm. that's lost. Yes. I've lost. Uh, I've lost a significant amount. Mm -hmm. in in uh, patronage, deferred patronage refund okay. through through uh, through that. Mm -hmm. They also sold debentures to members of the co-ops. Did you were you did you buy any? No, I uh, on debentures and I uh, through the years and going into retirement and everything, I got uh, I got my uh, my money out of it. The only thing that I've lost is. Is through the three cooperatives, Tyndall, 
and Scotland and Tabor, South Dakota, mm -hmm. lost the uh, deferred patronage. Okay. Which was a, actually a write off for income tax also. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, do you think it would be easy to organize co-ops today, or it would be more difficult than it was when you were involved in putting putting uh, well, together? Well, it's never an easy task. I don't know what the, how you would start another co-op and what what means you'd want to start the other co-op now. It's kind of, I guess my age has got me disinterested as yeah. more than okay. more at the time when you're aggressive and want to go you want to you want to get something done and, mm -hmm. but that was the main reason we started the cooperatives was through the to save to derive our savings out of the cooperative movement mm -hmm. okay uh you mentioned some other uh community things you were involved with bonham county ascs committee uh, what years were you on that Remember, generally? No, I was on that from about 19, well, from the time time was married to 53. I think I stepped out of that on, in about uh, 1970. Okay. And then uh, I, was, uh, I was committee man and also done crop reporting mm -hmm. and such, such work as that. Okay. Uh, that's and then I we started the also started back we started the bottom county livestock feeders back in 19 uh, 1970 I believe it was okay local uh -huh. and uh, yes here it's in the have one of the old papers on them mm -hmm. and that was in um, 1972. Oh, okay, okay. And then we started the, the Bonham County Livestock Feed Association, which was non-existent. Uh, they had one on one time as the grain belt feeders or something, but then it, mm -hmm. it was, Yankton County was active, and they started decided we wanted it in Bonham County. Okay, is that still going? Yes, it still okay. is. Okay. It still is. Okay. Um. ASCS, of course, you had to deal with the Farm Bill when mm -hmm. you were on that committee. Uh, were there some changes? Were, were you were, Was this area involved in all in, like, the, 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 I remember there used to be, like, wheat referendums every year until the early 60s, you know? Well, yeah. With, uh, the wheat referendum stuff, uh, Bottom County, during the 50s and 60s, was not a wheat-producing county, I mm -hmm. think, uh, on crop reporting and... In the early '60s, there was only there was maybe over a hundred acres in the 36 sections of Lincoln Precinct that was mm -hmm. that was into wheat. Yeah, it was mostly uh, then later on, then the more. wheat started developing more mm -hmm. in the western part of the county. Yes, it was. Mm -hmm. it, it there's it's changes in the county from the east to the west, but now these last years, there's more winter wheat and the crop rotation plan. The wheat has made a bigger picture back in the, in the crop rotation that I've seen in the area mm -hmm. since I've gotten out of it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, there was also, of course, one of the 1950s programs was the Soil Bank. It, was there much interest in Oh, the Soil there? Bank was quite big. Uh -huh. I, was, I had land in the Soil Bank mm -hmm. set aside. Set mm -hmm. a, now they call it set aside acres, but at that time it was soil bank acres. Yeah, yeah. Some of the some of the land, and generally it, it probably wasn't all the best land that was put into the soil bank mm -hmm. at that time. But it, it did help the farmers that utilized it, the mm -hmm. program. Were there quite a few acres around here? Then you said you had some. Yes, there was. I don't remember the yeah. the total acres, but yes, there was. Okay. Okay. Um, and I think you were also involved with the Farm Farmers Home Administration Committee for for the county uh, Farm Home. Yeah, yeah, that was Farm Home was connected with Yankton County, mm -hmm. and uh, I was 
on the board of that. Mm -hmm. And the uh, farm home was used uh, quite a bit. We still use farm home, yet mm -hmm. and all the loans and, and different different things. Farm home was was quite a great movement. Mm -hmm. Were they making more uh, loans for farm farm purchase, well, farmland purchase, and that kind of well, thing? Well, do today. At the time when I was on, it was uh, it was derived that if they couldn't get money through the bank and stuff, farm home kind of stepped in and helped the uh, lower profile farmers. Mm -hmm. But uh, in the later years, they got to be some large operations which I didn't feel was quite correct, mm -hmm. that were funded and still are funded by Farm Home yet mm -hmm. at this time. Yeah, they do a lot of housing now and uh, yeah. business loans and that sort of thing. Did I was uh, not a, rural development? Or, I was I was not involved in. Yeah, that was a little that, later. Yes, well, they had it at that time, but when I was on the board, it was strictly the the farm and farmers were at that time paying up the the old wheat seed loans that they had and and settling up on them and and such things as that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then um, you were also mayor of Scotland here. I was mayor of Scotland for nine years till okay. till I went uh, south and we were snowbirds for a while and then we. Uh, for 12 years, the wife and I were contractors with the Corps of Engineers. Now the Yankton, South Dakota. Mm -hmm. So five months of the time we were at Yankton, in the summertime and the wintertime, we wintered in, in Arizona. We did go to Texas. We also went some to Florida. Mm -hmm. And at the time when, I, when we uh, went south and I resigned, as being mayor because I was not obligated to uh, the time it was to put in to it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I enjoyed it. It was it was uh, an experience that when you dealt with the cooperatives and the, and dealing with the town, some of the town fathers were against you. And it's kind of an about face thing for me to come in and and. Uh, I, I ended up in good feelings with the with the town. We we drived and mm -hmm. some different programs and mm -hmm. and such. And it kind of feel a little bit uh, like uh, you know here when you are a little kid, why you're looked down on from being out in the countryside. Yes. And then the next thing you know, here years later, you're the mayor of the yeah. town. Yeah. Yes. It's it's quite a quite a feat of an honor. It seems to uh, that. Uh, when you was kind of a backward kid from the country, it seemed like we wasn't actually backward, but yeah. we just wasn't uh, they wasn't up to the up to the, the town. Mm -hmm. What sort of problems did you have to deal with as mayor here? Um, what kind of issues does a town the size of Scotland face? Well, the town issues was was developing a main street program for for uh, hard surfacing a. Street for our elevator, we had a lot of swamp problems and stuff, and so that was the big issue. Went to pier several times on it, got my teeth kicked in, and finally did get it swung through. And uh, then also we revamped our old city hall back to uh, make kind of a theater out of it, and uh, plus the day-to-day -day issues are the cleanup and uh, which. They never will accomplish completely, and plus, uh, while I was in, we did uh, we did mainly develop all new water mains through the city. The only reason at the time that I decided to run for mayor was Scotland was going to not take the real water at the time, and the one that was the mayor and stuff so. I threw my hat in the ring, and and then I guess I guess it it went my way is the way I feel, and mm -hmm. and it it done a lot of good. They really appreciated. We developed 
Broyan Industries with the alcohol plant and, mm -hmm. and water now is one of the prime issues of the country. That was a pretty big uh, thing for this community, wasn't it? Broyan Industries. That was like the first ethanol plant uh, uh, right in the, the state. The Broyan Industries started. Uh, they had an alcohol plant here that started by a group that uh, borrowed the money through farm, uh, through farm home, and through the, and uh, they didn't make a go of it. Mm -hmm. And so then the place went up for sale as a storage unit or what. And I was mayor at the time, and and the Bryan family came to Scotland. I bought them dinner, and then they purchased the the plant. Uh, some was saying the the other one that was bidding against them was going to just use it for storage. But as far as the Bryan family, they had a little family-sized operation back in Minnesota, and their idea was to develop into a into a alcohol mm -hmm. plant. They were a great asset to the area. Yeah, has that been really good for the rural area? Rural area, well, and it, uh, it developed. And it's one of the things Scotland has going for employment now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, how has uh, this community changed over the years? You know, you, you know, you're looked at it from out on the farm and uh, and then in town later on, uh, how has this changed? I notice you still have a lot of businesses on Main Street, and that's not well. We still have, but uh, we don't have a car dealership, new car dealerships. We have yeah. used. Uh, we don't have implement business. You used to have those. We used to it used to be a big Saturday night deal where all the farmers came to town, but now the the farmers farming has gotten so large that the little uh, it's hard for any small local business to compete because they're so large that they take their business almost to the wholesale end of it the farmers do mm -hmm. and so that kind of leaves the the main street guy sitting back and uh, it's not getting any better it's actually getting worse as far as the as far as i see it for the small towns uh Small towns such as this, uh, there's nothing wrong, I can't see it, with being a retirement community. That's the only thing we can look forward to. Uh, we take, we're a little further from Yankton, but anything within 30 miles of where there's industry, because in the cities they don't think nothing of being an hour on the road to get to work, where we're here, we thought. If we wasn't right there, if we can't park in front of the business place, it's terrible. Mm -hmm. But uh, being the size of the farms and everything, it uh, it just it's, it takes going to take a lot of effort to keep the small towns going. We're very fortunate in Scotland, yet we have the hospital, mm -hmm. and we have uh, Schwann's Depot here, which which helps. Yep. Plus, then the school situation the. Children aren't here no more in the country. They used to be. The numbers are way down. So, it's 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 quite a quite a task to keep the small town yeah. alive. Has there been some pressure around here for school consolidation, or are you still? No, there's there's been some pressure. Yeah. Or, there's yeah. been some pressure. Mm -hmm. I I don't have the answer to that. I yeah. I have my pros and cons on it. You could sit mm -hmm. and argue for hours on pros and cons on it because mm -hmm. I have children going to Tri-Valley which is a large one out in the country and they were talking about that out here in the country for a while but I think they still have to um, consolidate somewhat like Scotland probably has to get along with Minnow or the schools don't seem like they in the county they contradict one another they they have their own uh, because of sports and such, I think, is that um, the reason possibly for that. The sports sometimes takes uh, priority over education, mm -hmm. which I don't like to see. Uh, I'm all 100% for sports, but you can't uh, now, now everybody wants to be in sports and, and uh, it's it's 
financially it, it isn't feasible. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, looking back over your involvement uh, with uh, the cooperatives around here and uh, other areas, what kind of advice would you give somebody today if uh, somebody said, well, what, what should I do? You know, <laughs> what would you tell them? <laughs> uh, reason, what, the only thing I tell them now is I'm glad I'm out of it mm-hmm. because uh, it's really gotten technical. Uh, farming has all changed from cultivating to chemicals to the high price to seed. Uh, back when we, when I farmed, we took oats out of the bin. I think that one time we kept track when I started farming, it took a gallon of fuel, an acre. A gallon of fuel is about 15 cents. Now, uh, now with the price of everything, I truthfully, I I don't have the answers. I don't have the answers. I don't know uh, uh, the livestock movement. We we had a diversified. We had we had cropland and we fed quite a few cattle, up to 2,500 at a time, my brother and I. And uh, we had our own trucks. We had our own just about everything. But now it's got the technical. You. You can't. Uh, it just isn't possible now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Are you uh, optimistic or pessimistic when you look at the future of this <laughs> community and for farming around here? Well, I'm still optimistic. I uh, I like to see it keep going, and and uh, we uh, we're in a deficiency of rainfall in this area. We're a little further east and stuff. Mm-hmm. They're they're a little better off than we are, but uh, still the uh, the farming is still a great life uh, as far as as far as I'm concerned. Where you can be your own boss, you can go out and hear the birds sing, and and uh, city life is altogether different. It's uh, and because uh, we have family that just works in the city, and then we have the ones that. Are out in the country, and it's uh, it's. I could say it's a lot easier to raise children in a smaller area and, and out in the country. When we have raised our children, we had they had their own calves, they had their own livestock. What they worked with, they wanted to come home and they want to work with it. Then our last, when we my health failed me, and our last youngest daughter, there was more of a problem with on Main Street, raising a child on Main Street than there was uh, being out in the country. Uh, mm-hmm. Family life for the country is still my number one priority. Okay. Uh, I think that's about it. Is there anything else you'd like to talk about that we haven't touched on here? No. Any other things you were involved in or that we haven't uh, touched? No, I was involved in. I was everything from a flying farmer to a flying farmer. Okay. Yeah, okay. to a, I had owned four different airplanes in my lifetime. Okay, when did you start that? In 1955. Uh, okay. I uh, bought an old airplane for five hundred dollars and told, told them teach me how to fly it, and I got my private. And, Sold it for five hundred dollars, and I developed into a club, and then I bought my own, and then uh, it was time consuming, and being on the farm too busy, and and uh, the wife didn't care for the light aircraft, so I uh, I did go out of it then. Okay, okay, but uh, you did that for what? Did you fly around the country some? Well, some I I had about sixty now hundred hours a long time. Yeah, and. Uh, and when people want to go someplace or something, weather was a big obstacle, mm-hmm. and it started interfering with the other stuff. So it was it was not an expensive hobby at the time I was in it. The last one of the nephews took a tank out of the ground. And they said what was in it. It was aviation gas that I bought in. Uh, Mr. Sweet from Scotland delivered it to me for 21 cents a gallon. 
of the country. <laughs> you said it was still in the tank? Then. It was still some in the tank okay. two years ago. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Anything else? And uh, that's about it. Okay, okay. We've been visiting with Clement Kocek. Uh, thank you for your participation in the Cooperative Legacy Project. Uh, good luck to you. Thank you. Thank you. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see.